Hey, Gunsmith Beard, back with another gun video for Gun Talk, and it's always good to sit down and talk guns with my guys and girls that are subs of this channel, that follow this channel, that are OGs of this channel, that keep coming back, or have been here from the beginning. I am always an grateful and humbled by all of that. Um, and yes, there are new people, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for subbing the channel because there are a ton of people that watch my videos, which again is very humbling, but they're not subs um, of the channel. They are not subscribers. So um, the content I put out is absolutely free um, and subbing the channel is free. Um, so um, if you like the content, please consider subbing the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And as you know, if you've ever bought a gun or gun parts or any of that stuff, it is not free. It's actually kind of expensive. Um, my wife always reminds me that my hobby is very expensive and that's why I have sponsors. So, um, I love what I do, but you got to have sponsors. And so a big thank you to our sponsors, which are Brownells, Swamp Fox Optics and Shooter Innovations, three amazing companies that not only support the channel, but they also support the two way community. And so they support our community. So a big, big thank you to all of you. Hope you like the content. Let's take an up close look at the gun of the week. And then we're going to come back as always and talk about it. See you in a second. Hey guys and girls, welcome back. So let's talk about the gun of the week, which is this six hour 1911 22. But before we do any more, let me show you it's clear. I'm going to pull the magazine out and show you there's absolutely no ammo in it. And also let's check, let's check the chamber. So no round in the chamber, nothing in the magwell. So you should be able to see all the way through. And again, nothing there. Um, but this is the gun of the week and I did get this on trade from a buddy. I had like three of the guns that he was interested in and I was like, yeah, I can let one go. I, I know I had teased that there's suppressors coming and this was one of those I was like, would be fun to run a 22 can on this thing. It would be super quiet and a lot of fun to shoot and cheap to shoot. Um, so I picked this thing up and it's even though it says six hour, we've talked about this before on the channel. This gun was never made by SIG. It was actually made by a company that they bought GSG, which is German sporting guns. Um, they are an actual manufacturer of this gun and it is a rail gun. If you don't know what I'm talking about, when you look at 22 pistols, a lot of them, almost all of them are a rail gun of some configuration. And so, all that means is it's been designed to shoot a 22 rim fire and not a center fire. Um, center fire guns are much different, but also have a lot more recoil. So um, these are a lot of fun to shoot. I will say the weight of these make them even more fun to shoot because it feels like you're shooting an actual 1911 and 22 long rifle instead of it feeling like you have a toy gun and it doesn't feel realistic because it's so lightweight. And because it's so lightweight, it does snap a little bit in a 22, which seems like that doesn't, shouldn't be in the same sentence. It seems like it wouldn't make any sense for that to ever happen. But when you have a very, very lightweight gun um, that's plasticky, which this one isn't, then sometimes that can happen. Um, this one is metal frame, metal slide. The slide, the frame fit is what you would expect from an industry gun. It's not super tight, but because it's not super tight, it's a little bit more reliable and less finicky. Um, I know when you get into custom 1911s, this is not one of those, but I'm just saying, when you get into building 1911s, custom 1911s, if you get a really tight slide to frame fit, sometimes they can be a little finicky and not as reliable because of the slide to frame fit being so tight. Um, if any kind of uh, variant or um, dust 
you know, dirt gets in it, it just shuts the whole thing down. And that's why sometimes looser tolerances are a little bit more reliable. But I know it's a rabbit hole, a little tangent, but anyway, there are three different variances of this gun. So, and yes, they're all the same gun. Um, besides, like, there's a really short one, this, um, or it's an officer, I can't remember. Um, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about these full-size, government-issued style, 1911A1-ish style clones. Um, there's three variances. There's the one by six hour, which is stamped right here. Again, not made by six hour, made by GSG. Then GSG has their own version with their own branding on the left side. And then also the last one, which is again, the same gun is ATI, which is American tactical importers or whatever. Um, they have their, their stamp on the side. It's the same gun. Yes, there's a little bit of different variances. So like the finish, like this one has a matte stainless hammer and a black um, trigger, both skeletonized. Don't know why they went two-tone. Have no idea, but they did. Um, but you can find this one in black and black or silver and black. Uh, sometimes the grips are black. They're not this faux rosewood colored grip panels. Um, a double diamond or whatever you want to call it. Um, but these are from six hours. So they have their branding on the bottom right here. Um, and they have a nice texture to them. Um, that is nice. It feels good in the hand. It has a beaver tail on the back and a main housing, which is actually metal, which I'm surprised that's not plastic. And I will say with GSG, I've seen a lot of different quote unquote manufactured, uh, rail guns in 1911, 22. And some of the stuff is just plasticky. Uh, GSG, the reason I love GSG, besides they shoot well and they're made well, is they tend to use more premium parts. Like they use metal parts. Now it might be MEM parts or pop metal parts, but they're still metal, they're not plastic. So, and I don't know, and I know a lot of people might ask this question or wonder this question, even if you don't ask it, you might wonder, can you swap parts out with actual 1911 parts into a rail gun or a gun like this and to be honest i don't know i've never tried uh it might be a great part two video is what parts will fit in a rail gun like this one uh could we change out the mainspring housing with a uh, magazine flared version or we change this stubby um beaver tail change the hammer or um the trigger or whatever i don't know might be a great video for another day. I will say all the slides that I've seen, when you look at the cuts in the slide for sight cuts, they are Novak style, um, rear and front. These are plasticky. And when I mean plasticky, they're plastic. Um, I don't like that at all. Um, uh, they're super cheap. Um, I, I, I mean, I understand the price of these guns have gone way down. Um, I know right now these are like sub 400, sometimes 350 or less. So you can get these for a really good price, depending on what state you're in. Some, some states charge more just because of the state you're in. Um, and you can't get as good of a deal as like something I can get here. But anyway, the sights are plasticky and they're dovetailed. So, and it's metal. Um, slide so you could drift out these cheap plasticky sites and put real sites in if you want to spend the money I would guess or um, hypothesize that you probably wouldn't want to spend more money on a gun that costs less than 400 bucks that's up to you but I will say one of the things I did invest in is the threaded adapter for this barrel so I could run a can that cost me 35 bucks I think and that allows me to run a suppressor on the end when I get it so again I think these guns for the right price is a, a a great investment they're a lot of fun to shoot especially if you get a GSG uh, I know Colt has some uh, Browning has theirs and to be honest, I don't think they're as good as the GSGs that are made in Germany. And yes, it does say it is 100% made in Germany. Um, so 
I like them. I have quite a few GSG products and I love them, especially the, the older ones. And this tends to be one of the older models that's out there. Some of their new stuff got kind of weird when they got sued by H and K, um, for actually cloning their gun too much. Um, but if you're going to get a GSG, get an older one, get one like this. They're a lot of fun to shoot and they're pretty cheap. Uh, a scratch that needs to be scratched or whatever. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I have no idea at this point, but, um, I hope you like the video. If you're interested in it, I know a lot of guys, especially that have, uh, older kids that are into shooting or getting into shooting. Um, 22 is an awesome platform to start them out with, especially if you want them to grow into a nine or 45 ACP 1911. This is probably a good choice for this. Uh, and it has the weight so they get used to the weight. And so it's a good trainer. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I hope if you have one of these, let me know what, which one you have and how you like it or why you don't like it. Uh, leave us some feedback so we can talk about it and kind of discuss good or bad or pros or cons. Um, but as always, I'll catch you in the next video and work hard. God first. See ya.